Hi guys, welcome to another video. One of our last video, we looked at the configuration of IPsec tunnel between 40k firewall and the Microtech router. And it worked perfectly fine and we were able to test the connectivity between the two sides. And if you like to watch that video, click on the video link at the top right corner. Then I thought, why don't I just make another video that covers only the 40k firewall IPsec connectivity. So in this one, we'll see how we can set up an IPsec side-to-side -side VPN between two 40k firewall sitting in the headquarters and the branch site. Here is a step-by-step -step instruction article on my webpage. You can see the topology that we are going to build. We already have a 40 gate firewall configured at the HQ and the branch site. The headquarters has the LAN subnet of 10.1.1.0 slash 24. And for testing, we have a Linux PC with the IP 10.1.1.11 connected at the LAN side. Similarly, on the branch side, we have a 10.2.2.0 slash 24 network and another Linux machine with the 10.2.2.22 connected at the LAN side as well. At the moment, these PCs at the each sites can go out to the internet. However, both cannot talk to each other. And we are going to fix that in this video. Before we proceed, if you like what you are watching, ensure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. That would encourage me to create more such content like this one. And if you have further questions or suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below. These are the steps that we are going to cover in this video. So if you prefer to go step by step instruction on the web page, I'll put the link in the description as well. So you may check it out. All right, let's get started. Here is my 40 gate firewall at the branch one. Let me switch to the HQ firewall. I'm at the headquarters firewall now. And if I go to the interfaces, I have a LAN interface with an IP 10.1.1.1 slash 24. I also have a WAN interface with an IP 1.1.1.1 slash 24. Of course, this is not my public IP. I just use this for the lab purpose. So the concept will be clear for you guys. So just remember, if you see any IP that has one in it, it is for the HQ. And if you have an IP that has two in it, you just think that it's a branch one, okay, or side two. I also have a default static route, which is pointing to my ISP gateway. And if I look at the policy, I only have a single policy at each side, okay, that would allow the internet access for the end users. As you can see, there are some hits on it, and I only allowed HTTP, HTTPS, ping, and DNS services on it. Though ping is not required for the internet, it's just there for me to test the network, that's it. And on the branch one firewall, if I look at the interfaces, I have 10.2.2.1 slash 24 LAN side IP. And on the WAN side, I have 2.2.2.2. And everything else is same like the HQ. Let me now switch to the HQ Linux machine. To differentiate the machines, I just put blue wallpaper in it. On the HQ Linux machine, right click and click on open in terminal. Now if I type IPADDR, as you can see, I have an IP address 10.1.1.11. And if I try to ping google.com, you can see I can reach Google, which indicates that I have internet access. Let me now try to ping branch one Linux machine, which is, hold on, let me check. This is a branch one Linux machine, just like we did with the HQ Linux machine, right click and open terminal. Let me resize it under the IP ADDR command. Oh, I don't have an IP. I didn't turn on the wired connectivity. Let me turn that on. As soon as I did that, the network icon is updated, indicating the internet access. Let me now again check the IP, IP space ADDR. As you can see, I now have an IP 10.2.2.22, which I got it from the 40 gate LAN DHCP service. This is as per our diagram. Like we did in HQ, if I try to ping google.com, you can see that I am getting a response. And back to the HQ Linux machine, if I try to ping, 10.2.2.22 you can see I'm not getting any response same case with the branch one as well if I ping 10.1.1.11 no response either and we are going to fix that by configuring the IPsec tunnel between these two sites there are three steps in configuring IPsec VPN in FortiGate firewall the first step is the tunnel configuration which consists of phase one and phase two configuration and second is the security policy configuration and third being the route configuration. Let's go ahead and configure them. Now back to the HQ firewall, click on VPN, IPsec tunnel, click on create new IPsec tunnel. In the name field, enter the name HQ2BR1. In the remote gateway, 
leave the static IP address and the IP address it is 2.2.2.2 .2 interface will be the WAN interface choose that from the drop down toggle the local gateway button on if you have a single IP you can choose the primary IP here if you have a secondary one you can choose that here and if you have by any chance third IP on the WAN link you can click on specify and specify that here as I have only single IP I'm choosing that though if you have a single IP the IPsec would initiate from the single IP that I have on the WAN so I can very well not to choose this local gateway option but I'm just keeping the local gateway option on in the NAT traversal I'm gonna disable it because I have connected directly to the public internet so I don't require NAT option enabled so I'm disabling that so when you disable the NAT the IPsec would initiate with the port 500 if your FortiGet firewall is behind a NAT device then in that case you can enable the NAT traversal option so the IPsec would start initiate with the port 4500 you don't have to do anything in the advanced section next is IPsec authentication 90% of the IPsec implementation you deal mostly with pre-shared key so choose that from the drop down which is the default option by the way enter a strong pre-shared key here in the IK version choose 2 in the phase 1 proposal you will see multiple encryption and authentication proposal are chosen but it's not a good security practice to leave everything on I am just choosing AS256 as encryption and SHA256 as authentication and removing the rest in the Diffie Hellman group choosing the 14 one which is good enough at the time of this recording because that can change any point in time let's move on to the phase 2 enter the name in the name field let me copy and paste the same name as the phase 1 all right in the local subnet as we are initiating the traffic from the HQLAN side enter 10.1.1.0/24 and in the remote subnet enter 10.2.2.0/24 which is a branch 1 LAN subnet like we did with the phase 1 i'm choosing the AES256 and SHA-256 as encryption and authentication respectively leave enable replay protection and PFS option default in the Diffie Hellman group choose 14 and select the 5 which is not so secure and in the auto negotiate and keep alive check both so if there is no traffic the phase 2 will always stays up if you don't want to see the phase 2 to be always up then you can leave it as default but one small tip here if you ever monitor this IPsec tunnel with any network monitoring system and if you don't have this option checked time to time you will get an alert saying that the tunnel is down so when you go back and check you will see the phase 1 is up however the phase 2 is down because there is no traffic so so I would say it is best to check this option once done click on the tick mark under phase 2 selectors and you can see that the phase 2 subnets are added now if you want to add more subnet you can click on the add button here for me this is enough maybe I'll create a separate video demonstrating the multiple subnets later on click on OK so the IPsec tunnel at the headquarters are now created which is down at the moment of course we have not configured at the remote side for the tunnel to be up next let's go ahead and configure the security policy when I say security policy you can think of IPsec tunnel as a bridge and the policy is like a gate only when the gate is open the traffic will pass so with the policy we are basically opening the gate you can even schedule the policy so that you can control the timing as to when to open the gate so I hope that makes sense since we have to allow the traffic from both sides we have to create two policies that is allowing the traffic from either sides I've seen many people try to bring up the tunnel without having the security policies created which will not work so you need to keep this in mind you need to have the tunnel built and the policy created in order for the FortiGate firewall to initiate the IPsec VPN negotiations so you have to keep that in mind for the policy creation let me go to the policy and objects and click on firewall policy and click on create new in the name enter a user friendly name that will help you identify what does this policy do let me add hqlan to br1lan you know what let me add allow at the beginning so that I know it's something that I am allowing it's easy for me to look into the policy that way incoming interface choose the LAN outgoing interface choose the IPsec tunnel that we just created and in the source I need to add 10.1.1.0 slash 24 as the address object 
Fortunately, I already have it created for enabling the internet access security policy. So let me add that here. And in the destination, I do not have 10.2.2.0 slash 24 at the subject created. So let me create a new one. So click on create, choose address and the name BR1 land 10.2.2.0 slash 24. Let me copy the address and paste it in the IP slash net mask. Leave everything else as default and click on OK. You can see it is added, selected and it's now added to the destination grid. Uh, schedule you can leave it to always which means you can keep the gate open always service choose the service that you want to allow in most production networks you won't see a allowing all is selected instead you would see specific services such as http ssh snmp and things like that so since this is a lab i'm choosing all action should be accept because we are allowing the traffic right Uncheck the NAT option. You can use this option actually if you don't want to expose your internal IP and you are the one who is initiating the traffic. That is not required in this lab. Log allow traffic. If you see two options which says all traffic and security events, I would say just choose it to all so that you can see all the traffic. Ensure enable this policy is selected and then click on OK. The reason why you are seeing the exclamation mark next to the policy is because the IPsec tunnel is currently down so you can ignore that. Now I need to create another policy for the traffic initiated from the remote side. In case if the remote side would never initiate a traffic, you don't have to create a separate policy for the traffic initiated from the remote side. As a FortiGate is a stateful firewall, whatever the traffic you are initiating from here at the HQ side for example, the return traffic will be allowed based on the state entry. So you must have a policy that is allowing the traffic out and the return traffic by default be allowed. So I'm going to create another policy, this time it will be right opposite because the branch one will be initiating traffic towards me as well. So click on create new, allow BR1 LAN to HQ LAN, incoming interface, choose IPsec tunnel, outgoing interface, choose the LAN interface, source will be BR1 LAN IP, destination will be HQ LAN IP, service selecting it as all, action should be accept, uncheck the NAT option, log the traffic, ensure the enable this policy is selected and then click on OK. As you can see both the policies are now created and third you need to create the static route. So click on network static routes. We are basically telling the firewall if you want to talk to branch one subnet 10.2.2.0/24 you need to take the IPsec path. Create new enter the subnet 10.2.2.0/24. You don't need to mention the gateway instead you need to choose the IPsec tunnel that you're going to send the traffic to. So I am choosing the IPsec tunnel here. Don't worry about the advanced option. This needs to be touched only when you have multiple tunnels and you want to control the traffic flow with the static route using the priority. Click on OK. We have successfully completed the HQ configuration. Let's now go to the branch one and do the IPsec configuration there as well. Extend the session. We are now at the branch one firewall. To configure the IPsec tunnel, click on VPN, IPsec tunnel, click on create new IPsec tunnel. In the name field, enter the name br one to hq Remote Gateway Static IP Address, IP Address 1.1.1.1, Interface choose the WAN Interface, Turn on the Local Gateway, choose Primary as the IP, NAT Traversal Disable, In the Pre-Shared Key, copy and paste the Pre-Shared Key that you configured on the HQ side, IK Version, choose 2, In the Phase 1 Proposal, match the configuration you did at the HQ, which is AES-256 as Encryption and SHA-256 as Authentication. Unselect everything and leave AS-256 and SHA-256. In the Diffie Hellman group choose 14. In the phase 2 selectors enter a name and keep in the same phase 1 name here. In the local subnet enter 10.2.2.0/24. In the remote subnet enter 10.1.1.0/24. In the phase 2 proposals choose AS-256 and SHA-256. Unselect everything else and choose Diffie Element Group as 14. Check Auto Negotiate and Auto Keep Alive option. Check the tick mark. We have successfully added the phase 2 parameters as well. Click on OK here. As you can see the tunnel is down and you might wonder why the tunnel is down when we configure the tunnel at the both sides. Like I said before, we configure the tunnel but we yet to create policy for the same in branch 1. That's the reason the tunnel is not coming up. Although the HQ site is initiating the IPC communication. 
the branch one simply wouldn't respond because you don't have a policy to begin with. Let's go ahead and create a security policy. In the policy and object, click on firewall policy. I only have the internet policy at the moment. Let me create new one for the IPsec. Click on create new, enter the name, allow BR1 LAN to HQ LAN. Incoming interface will be LAN. Outgoing interface will be the IPsec. Source address select the LAN address that I created already for the internet policy. Destination, I don't have the address group, so let me create new one. Click on create address HQ LAN 10.1.1.0 slash 24. In the IP slash net mask, copy and paste the HQ LAN address from name and click on OK. HQ address is now added. Let me add that into the destination. Service should be all. Action should be accept. Uncheck the NAT option. Check the log option and enable this policy and click on OK. Let's now create another policy for the traffic initiated from the HQ side. Click on create new, enter the name allow HQ1 LAN to BR1 LAN. Incoming interface is the IPsec. Did you just notice the IPsec tunnel used to be in red color indicating it was down few seconds back. Now it turned out to be green which means the tunnel is up. So immediately after creating the first policy the tunnel came up which is good. Outgoing interface should be LAN. Source is the HQ LAN 10.1.1.0/24. Select that. Destination is BR1 LAN 10.2.2.0/24. Select that as well. Service is all. Action should be accept. Uncheck the NAT option. Check the log option and enable this policy option and click on OK. We have both the policies created and the tunnel is up. At this point, when the HQ send a traffic to the branch one. The traffic will reach to the branch one, but the return traffic doesn't know how to get back to 10.1.1.0/24 because there is no route for it. We need to create a static route for that. Click on network and static routes, create new. Destination will be 10.1.1.0/24. Interface will be the IPsec one and click on OK. And that's it. We have successfully created the IPsec with the policy and routes on both sides. Remember we still had the ping traffic that was initiated? If you now go back to the firewall policy, you should see some hits on it. Go back to the firewall policy. As you can see, I have some hits on the one of the security policy. I do not have the hit count table added in the firewall policy, but this should be okay. Same you can observe from the HQ firewall as well, as you can see. Although you can check the IP6 status from the VPN IP6 tunnel, the best way to check the status for both phase 1 and phase 2 is by going into dashboard status. By default there won't be any IPsec widget. So click on add widget and add the IPsec widget there. Expand the IPsec widget. You can see there are some traffic that was sent through this tunnel. Incoming data and outgoing data which indicates there are some traffic on this tunnel. And the phase 1 and the phase 2 also showing up. If I now go back to the PC that was connected to the LAN side of each site, you should now get a response from the remote locations. Login. In branch 1, the ping is still stuck. That is okay. When we stop and reinitiate again, it will work. Let me check the HQ PC. Login. As you can see, the ping before it was stuck. And now we are getting a response from the branch 1 from the HQ site, which is awesome. Let me stop it and try again. And still it is working fine. Let's now go back to the branch 1. Let me stop it and try to ping HQ LAN gateway which is 10.1.1.1. As you can see we are getting a response. Let me now try to ping HQ PC which is 10.1.1.11 and this time it worked perfectly fine as well. And if you want to shut down the IPsec tunnel, don't try to shut down the tunnel from the widget. If you have active traffic in the tunnel, the tunnel will come back up again. So let's check that. In the IPsec widget screen, select the tunnel and choose bring down option and all phase 2 selectors and click on OK. As you can see the phase 2 is still up. To bring down the tunnel, instead you need to go to network, interfaces, expand the WAN interface where you have pointed this IPsec tunnel, right click on the tunnel that we just created and click on set status and disable. The tunnel is now disabled and it is now showing in a grey color. This is how you can shut down a particular tunnel. You can right click and enable it back as well to bring up the tunnel. And one more thing, make sure you don't do this when you don't have a backdoor access to the remote firewall or somebody at the site. Alright, as you can see the VPN tunnel is now back up. And if I go back to the BR1 PC, it is stuck again. Let me initiate the ping, stop the ping, control C and start again. Boom, we are back in business. The traffic is now passing through the tunnel and everything is working perfectly fine. That's it in this video. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.